The definition of a febrile seizure is that it's an epileptic seizure associated with fever. The fever caused by infection or inflammation outside the central nervous system in a young child who's otherwise neurologically normal. So febrile seizures characteristically occur between the age of six months and five years. So seizures associated with a febrile illness outside that age range, you would be cautious in um, calling that a febrile seizure. So the onset of febrile seizures is rare after age six years. Fever is usually defined as having a temperature of greater than 38 degrees centigrade. So the definition of a febrile seizure by uh, a cutoff temperature, um, it should be considered that, that that 38 degrees centigrade refers to core temperature. And so as we're often measuring temperature in the home um, as skin temperature, uh, it can be falsely low. So we often have to ignore the temperature that's taken at the time of the seizure. So when you have a fever, uh, there's usually vasoconstriction uh, and any attempts to reduce skin temperature like fanning uh, or tepid sponging is only potentially able to um, increase vasoconstriction and actually increase core temperature. So we no longer recommend those measures for a child with a fever. So um, simple febrile seizures need to be distinguished from what we call complex febrile seizures. So by far the majority of febrile seizures are simple by definition. So they are always bilateral, tonic or clonic seizures, meaning the child has an episode of stiffening or rhythmic jerking movements. Uh, often uh, in sequence with tonic posturing followed by the chronic part of the seizure. So the definition includes uh, that they should be less than 10 minutes in duration and they should not recur within 24 hours or within the same febrile illness. On the other hand, a complex febrile seizure uh, perhaps would make up a third of the incidence of febrile seizures. They uh, can have focal features. So any uh, asymmetric posturing, head turn, eye deviation, uh, one-sided stiffening or jerking movements uh, would define uh, that uh, episode has been a complex febrile seizure. Also a seizure longer than 10 minutes in duration and if a seizure recurs within the same febrile illness or within 24 hours. So how is a febrile seizure managed? Obviously, uh, every child needs a, a history and examination. There are no routine lab investigations to follow after a febrile seizure. Any investigations really are determined by the child's clinical status. Um, we don't recommend um, antipyretic medications as a means of preventing recurrence of febrile seizures, because we know that, that um, uh, like paracetamol does not reduce the recurrence of febrile seizures, but obviously makes the child feel more comfortable. So if intracranial infection, such as meningitis, is suspected, or if the child is particularly unwell, then child needs to be admitted and investigated and treated as appropriately. So when to consider hospital admission after the first febrile seizure and the child is otherwise well. So we re recommend a referral um, for inpatient ad admission in a child that's under 18 months at the time of their first febrile seizure. If it's a complex febrile seizure, or if there's a very high parental uh, or carer anxiety. 
Uh, also, children that um, are of concern would be those that are already taking antibiotics when they, um, when they have a febrile seizure. Uh, or those children where you can't find the source of the infection. So anti-seizure medication uh, is not recommended after a febrile seizure. Why? Well, febrile seizures um, are relatively benign, although it might be scary to the family. Uh, anti-seizure medications, on the other hand, have a very high rate of adverse effects. And so the recommendation from the Cochrane group is um, that we don't treat febrile seizures with anti-seizure medications. So what a parent or carer wants to know after their child's had the first febrile seizure, is this ever going to happen again? Um, well, the recurrence risk overall is between 30 to 40 percent. So quite a good chance that they will be recurrent. The age of the child is important in uh, determining if there's likely to be a recurrence. So any child younger than 12 months when they had their first febrile seizure has a 50-50 chance of having another one. On the other hand, if a child is over age three years when they had their first seizure, then it's uh, much less uh, common to see further febrile seizures. So the other question a family might have is, um, is my child going to develop epilepsy? So the overall risk after uh, febrile seizures is very low, only around 3%, which is perhaps um, twice the incidence of epilepsy in an otherwise healthy child who doesn't have febrile seizures. The risk's in increased, obviously, if there's an abnormal neurologic examination preceding the onset of febrile seizures. If, this, if it's a complex febrile seizure, that increases the likelihood the child might go on and develop epilepsy later. Uh, and having a first degree relative with epilepsy is um, certainly another risk factor for developing epilepsy. Uh, so, um, uh, Gina has mentioned uh, the Kids Health website as a source of information um, for uh, parents and carers of children who have their first febrile seizure. Uh, the paediatric neurology community in New Zealand has um, had a, played a role in um, developing the parent uh, education information on that website. So we approve it and we keep it updated. And then to mention the health pathways. So um, <clears throat> these were um, written for um, children with epilepsy and febrile seizures last year. Um, I think we're still struggling to get them uh, in, uh, localised to all the regions of New Zealand. Um, but we're working on that. Um, uh, Professor um, Lynette Sadlier um, at the University of Otago in Wellington has played a major hand in um, creating those pathways. So you should find the pathways informative as to how to investigate, um, manage and advise um, uh, children and families uh, with the first seizure, epilepsy or febrile seizures. Um, but also there's quite a lot of information there about what when to refer to a paediatrician and what to expect in terms of communication from a paediatrician um, so that your management of a child with seizures or epilepsy is, is coordinated between primary and secondary care. So that's the end of my talk and it's probably a good time to have questions about uh, epilepsy in children. <laughs>